Hello, welcome back. Uh, most of you know I'm Dr. George Machaki or Dr. George. Today we're going to be talking about personal finances. You're taking this class, either you're taking me strictly for personal finance class for one of, uh, uh, one of the schools I'm teaching at, or this is a uh, section in our introduction to business. <clears throat> you have to understand personal finance because when you're in business, all personal finance is an extension in business, only more uh, uh, functions, more costs, more zeros added to my checkbook. But basically, it's the same concept. I have to acquire funds to pay for the school, buy a car. I have to acquire funds to uh, 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 run my business. Or uh, do I take a loan? Do I sell something? Do I bring a new partner, uh, rent out the room? So is it going to be equity financing to uh, for my venture? Is it going to be a uh, 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 debt financing, take it out on a, a credit card or a charge card? And am I going to retain some of the money? Is retained earnings when I get a raise or put some of it away for a new car? Everything you're doing now in your personal financing, it, uh, when you go into business, whether you're a manager or a team leader or something, is an extension of what you've learned. So I address this a little bit differently in my classes. If I'm teaching the evening classes, I most likely have more uh, uh, working uh, people, adults that are uh, uh, on their own. Not stereotyping, just that's what happens. You know what I mean? Or they got a job, everything else. So I'm not going to tell them, hey, here's how you open up a checking account. Here's how you do that. Because they already know that. They're already up at that level. So I take them, how do you invest? How do you take the money? How do you take that uh, 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 raise you got? How do you turn it around into an IRA? That's what gonna, this whole chapter is about. How do I uh, minimize my taxes? Should I uh, uh, pay taxes now? Uh, 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 and then later on when I'm ready to retire, uh, should I basically at that time... Uh, um, or pay the taxes then. Should I take term insurance or should I take whole insurance? Term insurance is quick and dirty. Whole insurance is basically has a little saving. Which is better? Do I want to start investing? Do I want to start putting money away for retirement? Do I want to put money away for education? How do I do? How many checking accounts should I have? What should I do here? <clears throat> How do I improve my credit score? What are they looking for? Is my credit score good? How, uh, how I don't have so much money? How do I create create a budget? How do we create a capital budget? How do we create an operating operating budget is day to day. I got to have so much money for my latte at Starbucks. I got to have so much money in business to pay my, uh, my, uh, 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 for lack of better words, <clears throat> my employees, or I gotta have money in advance to buy the inventory. I gotta put money in advance to buy my groceries so I could eat all week. I get paid now. Do I keep the money away, or do I am I a just in time uh, uh, type of person? How quickly do I pay my bills off? Do I look at the interest rate? Who gives me a better rate? Who gives me buy one get one free? Uh, who gives me discount rate? All this in personal finance is everything you're gonna do when you're taking for finance. Nothing then change it's more zero okay so here's what i'm going to do since uh, i'm going to try to tie in adults i'm going to say adults you're in college you're both adults i'm talking about some that are on their own and others that are basically still living at home or you're uh, uh splitting a bill with somebody else and you're just giving him or her uh, a, a maintenance amount and they pay the rent they pay everything else and you don't know nothing about the bills you just assume that's how much you want to say hey you gotta give me three hundred dollars a month for your one room and your bedroom and the takes care of utilities and you know a drink or, or food or some basic uh, need and you go okay what are they? it covers all this all one good but then when you break it up you say wait a minute everything that we're doing and there's five of us living here i shouldn't be paying 300 i should only be paying 75 dollars because now you're taking you understand the money you understand why am i paying them maybe i should do it myself let me pay the electric bill let me pay the water bill i want to develop credit now you see what you have to do even if you're doing something even if you're living at home say hey mom or dad and you're working and it works out well for you you're helping a family you know what i mean because a lot of people their offspring just still at home there's nothing wrong with it. I got a big house. I got uh, you know, family members who live here. They come, but they help out. They clean. They do something else. Or they pay some of the bills. So if you're still at home, going to school, it's fine. But you have to understand 
how the money worked. You hand because the whole life is about the money. What's about inflation? What does it mean? I got a rate. I got two percent rate. Oh, that's great. I got two percent rate. What's the cost of living? Five percent. Wait a minute. I got two percent rate. Cost of living five percent. So three percent more for me to live as I'm used to now, or I got to reduce my way of living by three percent. Wait a minute. I should ask for more money. Do you see? So all of this. But when you have an argument, it's easy to say, "Well, I think I deserve more." Look. George is making uh, $30 an hour, but I got college. I've got experience. I should be getting 35 I got more experience. Uh, 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 well, okay, I can bring more customers in. George has to be trained for a year. Uh, uh, I'm Sally. I'm already trained. I already know that I can do this. You see how you're using your money, you're using what you do, and you're understanding from a personal perspective, then when you're in business, it makes sense when you're looking at it. How much does it cost? I don't know. It sounds good. Good? Okay, so let's go on in our uh, class. Remember, I'm going to keep this short. Uh, uh, the author has a good. I've got a lot of sites. I'm going to put in more sites in, uh, uh, when you're in, uh, in in one of my classes. It's just going to be additional information site, a module. I think I'll create additional information. And you have financial and other sites, just YouTube and everything else, just to give you an idea. Remember, you're going to do what you want. You have to adjust it, be flexible to your needs. What do you need? If you got a kid or, you've got, or you're the main supporter, you're thinking your finances differently. If you're on your own and you have a place to think and all I got to do is pay for the water and I got some fun, I could enjoy my life a little bit more until I have to do that. Or maybe this works out well. Do you see what I mean? So, okay, so here's what you're going to do. Where are you going to get your advice? Your parents are always going to give you advice. But I don't want to listen to them because I, uh, oh my God, you know, when I was doing my son's taxes, man, you made all that money. Where the hell did it go? Oh, gee. So he doesn't. You, uh, but they'll give you advice. You should say like this. Or not advice. You see how they live. You see how they save. You see what the, uh, how they uh, buy a car. You see how they put money aside. They see how they look at different things when they're buying stuff. That's where you get your advice for. You uh, all right? So uh, real quickly, you know, I go a little bit of financial planners. You know, all these other fan, uh, friend and family will give it to you for free more than you think. All these, they want some money. They're, you know, they're selling a product, no problem. But you don't have to buy. You could go and listen to them and say, oh, okay, now I understand it. I'll come back. I think like just like when you're buying something, you're gonna buy it online, but you go into store and you try to feel it touch it and get some information then you buy in the line you shop around now you've got some knowledge what you're trying to do is get knowledge a basic understanding all right now first uh, financial control step okay take an inventory with your own you know keep track of your expenses blah blah like prepare a budget i'll open these up and i'm going to go into all of this you know uh, start with a savings plan borrow only what you need and charge what you want uh, i mean uh, some people when, when you're charging you're basically using your future earnings now and sometimes that makes Makes sense when you take me for finance because the money's cheaper now interest rate now i'm gonna go a little bit high but down the road it's gonna go over it's gonna go up and the value of my product's gonna go up so maybe it's a good idea do you see you have to know when to do it when to charge when to hold off when to pay cash or when to wait and when to compare that's all about the, the control okay cash flow a lot of businesses fail for cash flow a lot of uh, uh, marriages fail for uh, for cash uh, for uh, cash flow a lot of relationships fail because i brought your money and pay me back i don't love you no more blah, blah, blah. so establish goals estimate you know do a thing income track it for one month she's gone and now they everything is electronically you know where your money you just got to categorize this is spending this is a good time this is for my rent this is for my everything else and now you have anything because what you learn with your personal finance and then you're going to go for a business and say hey did you ever uh, you're going for uh, for like a team leader or maybe a supervisor's job and they're going to say hey do you want to uh, do you know anything about finance do you ever do a budget not in business, uh, but I own my, uh, look, I'm at home. I lived at home. I, I, opened, I was on my own since I was uh, 18, 15, 16. I was doing this. I'm at home. I took care of my mom's, uh, uh, I took care of some of the expenses. I paid the rent. I paid this. I did this. And all that, you build, oh, geez, you do know a lot. Or I bought this. I track my income. I do my budget. I stay in here. I'm always, I never behind. I always got extra cash flow. Okay? So budget includes money, food, and everything else. And you should do this. If you even do, try to, expect Especially now you have to get that new uh, uh, driver's license, a uh, uh, smart ID or whatever it is that uh, says this is you or you can't go on an airplane or any federal building because of COVID-19, this thing will slow down a little bit. But anyway, what you need, you got to have some identification other than your driver's license, birth certificate, or if you got a, 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 a for lack of better words, a, 
uh, a passport. You know what I mean? Because you have to do all that there anyway. But you're going to need a bill, current address. You usually have no bill. So basically, say, hey, I'll pay. You know, you're going to ask your parents you're gonna, or the person you're looking at uh, to take a bill. Don't take the electric bill. Expense, uh, high, sorry for electric. And look at, uh, uh, take a gas bill, take a water bill, garbage bill. As long as you got something. Because you can say, hey, we lived with my partner. I lived with my friends and everything else here. We're on our own. I paid uh, the rent. We split this up. We, you know, we're all uh, co-signers or co-lease or whatever you want to call it. But we also, uh, but I took care of the gas, electric. And all, when you're going for your own credit and everything else, all of this showing that you know how to manage money. You know how to put money aside. You know how to pay your bills. I'm extending, giving you service for 30 days or 60 days. I expect the money back. Because in business, that's uh, uh, your uh, uh, credit cards and your bills, everything coming to me is basically money that I need to run my business. I know that source of income coming back. You took a charge card, you pay me interest. It's extra money for using my money now or taking my product now, but I need that money to run my own operation. If you don't pay me on time, I'm going to be late. So that's why I, uh, I bill you. I charge you more. So now if I'm going to give you credit, I want to make sure, you know, we're going to talk about the five C's of credit. I'll hit that right now, is your character, your capacity, how much money you're making, your, you know, how much you're uh, working, you're going for a car. I can make it. Who's paying, uh, how much for the rent, how much for uh, your insurance, how much just blah, blah, blah. And then for the car. I had a lot of students that were going for the car and they say, hey, I got the mortgage, I got all approved. What kind of car are you getting? I'm getting a Corvette. I'm getting a real fancy car, Mustang, one of those new Shelbys, you know. If I'd be driving it now, there's an old guy trying to think he's young. You know what I mean? Nah, I like a nice, easier, softer, mellower car. But anyway, so I'm younger and everything else. I'd want a smart, uh, fast car to have a Camaro. I had a lot of fast car. But then... I didn't think about the insurance. You know how much insurance? Wow. How much, what, how much, oh, we'll add it all on to this. So now your bills are higher than what you expected. And now you're spending all your money in the car, working all the hours. And you can't drive the thing because you got to work all those hours. So you're going to say, hey, I can't afford that. Maybe I'll just get a Mustang, a plain Mustang, no fancy wheels, and I'll downside. I still got what I want, but it's in the what I could afford. So, you know, in the conditions, uh, how many years? Oh, don't worry. You can't afford it now. You could have 15 years. But you're paying over that car three or four times. That's what you're going to collateral. You got any collateral? Well, I got my dog, or I got my old car, or I've got this there. What you could do for a collateral, then you could basically start reducing. That's what they're looking to give you the loan. Because they're out there, you know, and if you got collateral, you got good credit and everything else, they'll say, hey, you could get it for 4%, 5%, 6%. Poor credit, 16%. That cost. So remember your four C's of credit. Okay, so you got that uh, financial base. You know, uh, live fruitfully. Uh, here's what happened. Both of you got a partner. The marriage is on the way down, but it's on the way back up. It, you know, it goes into the cycle. But so anyway, you're coexisting together with the person that you're going to be for the rest of your life. Okay? I'll paint in a scenario. And so you got two incomes coming in. You, first of all, you had your own apartment, one income, and now you bring in your other partner because this is the person that you, you exist well and it works out well. And so you're going to split the, uh, the rent and everything else. What you should do if you think this is going to be a, a thing, it's going to be a relationship, you're going to stay, you should basically still live off of your income, take his or her money, and basically put that in the savings for other things. But remember, just don't put in the other person, a joint account, your name and my name because you put in a separate account you have no access to it if it's truly that relationship and that's no different than business you got a contract you know we all got profit how much of a profit you get 60 percent. i got 40 that's all it'll be a contractual agreement i don't want to be so harsh but i'm a business person if you know the rules and what's required just like at home you know you could do this you can't do this you could do this you can't do this when you bring a partner in or you bring something else and now you're coexisting together or marriage or, or whatever it is you know what i mean you you should have some kind of rules or thing before, because otherwise you're gonna say, eh, no, no, I don't think I want to do that. I'm not. Gonna, eh, I love you for so long, but after a while it wears out. You want that for uh, for a longer time. My words of advice, okay? Uh, and it's no different in business. You gotta be selective of your business partner. If your business partner changes, then you go, okay, uh, let's change your agreement. How do I buy out? What do I do? So long. Try to leave it always in a good uh, setting, okay? Benefits of buying a home, you know, could you live in it? Could you, could you rent it? You know, you have a tax write off. And then you have to see what's going on with the new administration. Are they gonna take off uh, tax? I got a tax write off. But because of Trump's uh, uh, generous double my. Uh, uh, 
standard deduction, even when I did all the itemiz uh, itemization, I ended up better taking the standard deduction because it was a uh, better write-off. Are they eventually going to get rid of the tax write -off? Maybe, maybe not. The tax write -off is what the what gives the American dream of br bringing it in. So do I, it doesn't have to be home. It could be town, home. Remember, the whole thing of all these write-offs, are you giving to charity or anything else, even in businesses, how do I minimize my tax requirement i don't want to say burden because when you pay taxes you're getting for the social service the police the security all this other stuff hospitalization whatever do you see what i'm talking about so how to but i want to minimize it give them enough because the rest of us so i can enjoy it no different than a business how could i share my profit among my uh, other things okay savings and credit card you'll uh, start saving you everyone should have a credit card get a credit card i'll put some links on there charge something but pay right off what you're trying to do is establish that i have the money they have a two thousand uh, dollars uh, uh, uh what do you call it uh, um, good for two thousand uh, dollars credit limit i'm only going to charge 500 600 but i paid right off i don't max it out so that's how you develop your credit score your character i got that that money but i don't go I don't max it to the end and keep on going up okay a debit card credit card look at the terms and condition yeah again uh, uh advantages disadvantages you know what i mean okay uh types of insurance you got health uh dependence on your whole life and term i gotta talk about that right now most of you are underneath you some of you underneath your insurance remember whole life is good you got savings and pure insurance term is just like a car insurance i don't get anything else i get an accident term insurance uh, uh no one collects until i die and that's if you got someone that's required uh that you're uh, not a dependent but is dependent on you and something happened they have the money to be able to at least uh, survive you're not there no more because that source of income from you is no longer there but then you know so but this costs you cheaper here because the younger you are, the odds are you're not going to die naturally and all that unless you get hit, you know, more, you're a little more reckless. But as my age, you get older because they look at the statistical and they basically look when they look at the, the things and they say, okay, here's how many people this age die of this thing. And statistically, they know what the, uh, what the numbers are and the insurance rates are basically uh, tied to, to that, okay? I'm talking about uh, annuities, basically uh, for a fixed period of time, take it for finance, Social Security, a lot of people aren't worried about that, right? I mean, some are, some will be collecting, they keep on changing. Make sure you know the difference between the individual retirement, the tax deferred plan, you put the money now, you get, let's say you get uh, $200, uh, let's say $100 a, a, a raise a month. <clears throat> Your tax, you're going to put you in another tax bracket, so that's going to go up. What you basically do, you open up an IRA for $100. It basically reduces your tax bracket and you're going to say you're either going to pay your taxes later when you hit like 65, 67, to keep on changing the age, I don't remember, you know, 67, 68, whatever it's going to be, but yeah, and then you're going to live longer anyway when they keep on changing that. So at that time, you already got everything all paid off, so your taxes are going to be less because you don't have those expenses because you're not working as hard, but you have everything paid off. You're working now to get those assets, the capital gain, yeah, I mean, not to, to get your capital, buy your house, get your thing. And so when you're uh, at least pay off some of that, so you're all set up, okay? Now, root IRAs, basically, you don't give up the tax deduction, you pay it now, but then when you're 65, because you say, I'm going to make more money, when you cash it out, you don't pay any kind of taxes on it. You still pay your income, not income tax, but your um, uh, sales tax and all that other one. Okay, 401 is basically the benefits what a company gives you if you're working. Planning your estate will is basically after you die, you have, an, uh, 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 for lack of a better uh, uh, document, an uh, uh, executor takes care of it. It. And remember, when you're looking at this uh, uh, part of a planning estate, you also have a power of attorney. When you sign over power of attorney for your banking or your uh, uh, asset, he or she, make sure you give it to the person you really trust because he or she could just sign off on it. And uh, unless you got dementia or you're sick and you took advantage of somebody else, the court's going to say, you gave this individual power of attorney. It's like you signing off on that. Okay, and then we got collateral. I'm just opening this up. I want to keep that investment uh, strategy. Start early, diversify. Remember, mutual funds are a nice way to start. Start on one stock. Hey, and they start with penny stocks. It doesn't cost you much. E-Trade, a lot of them, once you're a member, some of them are free. Some of the other ones, they give you advice. You got to pay for it. But you could read. You could YouTube. You could. But look at the most current one. Because remember, in business, I'm looking within the most current. Look what's going on with the company now or what you think is going on with the uh, uh, other organization. Okay, risks, uh, you know, federal insurance, high grade, different kind of balances, growth. What are you looking for? Collectible and futures. All right. 
this is the thing, it's the investment period, so the way you, uh, you start off, bonds, IRU, U.S. Treasury notes, and you go municipal bonds, yeah, they do pretty well, they usually do default, Detroit defaulted, you get out, but, you know, you know, Chicago, I don't know, you know what I mean? So the, the, there's a lot of uh, municipal bonds. You don't have to live in, this, uh, in the state or the municipality to buy those bonds. You just have to uh, purchase them. But look at the states that see potential uh, that see growth. California, I don't know if I buy anything. They could change, but there's so much going on. Their taxes, people are leaving. They say, heck with it. So you could see the dead states going down there. So I'm leaving. I won't buy any bonds in there. But you know what I may do? I may buy property and get in there. Because as it starts deteriorating, prices go down. Right now, prices are up. Prices go down. And I might look at investment. That's what you have to look at when you look at investment. Which companies are struggling? Pennies are not going down. You go, oh my God, pennies. People, you can uh, won't buy. But now if somebody else is looking at it, you have some of the malls say, we want to buy penny. We're going to turn it around, make it entertainment, bring clothing line in here, have an ascot. Even though it's got the penny's name, what do I have? I have the distribution change. I have the stores. I have name recognition. I just got to change my product mix, product line, what we're going to be talking for now. All right. Well, anyway, this is all for this. Whether you like business or not, you have to understand your other thing. Uh, do I take a, a, a student loan from Citibank, Wells Fargo, or do I take it from the government? I may pay higher from the government, but the government is a little more lenient with me. Government gives me a little more breaks. The government gives me a lot more de uh, deferment. If I pass away with my student loan, the student loan is why it all away. If I have a, a, a Wells Fargo or a Citibank or you know, a private student loan outside the government, not the fiscal. I basically, what happens is, um, uh, if I die, hey, you got this state. Remember, we talked about the will. They're going to say, hey, he owes me all this money. Give it back to me. Now, the, uh, okay? Now, this, uh, Remember, this is just a quick overview. I want you to understand that. Don't be intimidated. If you're living in a home or anything else, or you're, you, 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 you're kind of paying uh, for a, a, a part of something, uh, if you're paying for a part of your rent or something else, find out how much you're paying. Find out what it is. Ask your, uh, the person you're living with, how much is it for electric? How much are we paying for there? And then look at score footage. How much air conditioning we're using? Hey, I'm always watching a fan. George is in his room, air conditioned 24 seven, never at home. Why should I be paying the same amount on my electric bill that George is paying when he utilizes more? Or, hey, he's going to do that. You know, everyone pays the same thing. That's what our lease said. No problem. Air conditioning's in. We're all going to be equal. It's like somebody who's in a restaurant, and, you know, a lot of time, uh, a lot of time for business section, uh, or like this. Look, if you're tight on your money, it's okay. You know, when you're in there, you look at it, you, you could ask for individual checks. You know what I mean? A lot of people say, hey, we all eat a one check, please, and it's the person who buys a steak. Everything else you're buying is a hamburger because you don't know he's going to do this or she's going to do this. And they wrap it all up to take an average, and now you have to pay for his steak, and you only had fries and water. That's not fair. Ask for individual uh, uh, checks. The waitress doesn't care. Just tip her a little bit accordingly. Okay? Well, they do care, but it's a little more paperwork. It makes life easier. Or, if you're doing that, make sure you say, hey, everyone, we should spend around like $8. That's what everyone and we pay in and our drinks. Don't go overboard. Set up some rules. That's how you watch your money. Don't feel intimidated. In business, you're looking at it. Someone takes advantage of you. Hey, give me my money. Look at some of these people who argue. When you argue, hey, where's my discount? I'll look at the receipt. Don't be blinded. Some people say, how much? I don't know. I don't know. Who's paying for it? Oh, I just got my mom's. Look at the amount. Eventually, you have to carry it. If you don't understand it now, and all of a sudden something happens, you have all this money, it's going to go through your hands. People are going to take advantage of you. Tell your accountant that you don't know nothing about accounting. I'll put my arm around you and I'll say, trust me, just give, just, just sign the checks. I'll make sure, how much allowance you need? 20 bucks a day? You've got, I give you 50 and I keep the rest. I'll invest it, but you don't know what I'm doing. You should be aware of it. You don't have to control it. Make sure you know where the money's going, have a budget, kind of have a, see how close you are. Remember with technology, everything else, or debit card, you could have a good idea where all your money's going, all right? Again, my name is Dr. George. Uh, look at some of the other sites I have for uh, in the course management system that you're taking me with. And let me see how many minutes. I might have went over a little bit more in this one. 24 minutes. But I think it's something important. All right? Talk to you later. Bye.